So, are you interested in starting woodwork, or starting your own workshop, or growing a workshop? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how I started with just one evolution mitre saw and turn that into this fully functional workshop. I've been wanting to make this video for a really long time because I wanted to share with you guys a little bit more about how I got started and how I grew my workshop. I've had lots of questions about how I've managed to afford all these tools. So in this video, I'm going to share with you everything. I'm going to be very honest. At the beginning, I'm going to talk about how I managed to acquire all this equipment. And once I've told you about how I made my workshop, I'm going to give you some advice on getting started yourself. So hopefully you learned something and sit back and enjoy. Now, when you go to uni, quite often people get a student loan. So you find yourself opening your bank account and you see quite a bit of money in there. And that is for living for that year, you know, to support you through uni. It's for food, rent, um, party or, you know, entertainment, just to help you live. Now, I made a conscious effort of spending as little money as possible on stuff I didn't need and saving as much of it as I can on the workshop. Because when you're at woodworking school, they tell you that when you leave, it's very difficult to start your own workshop because it costs a lot of money. So I thought if I started early, then I'd have quite a bit of money by the end to be able to buy tools and kit out my workshop. I didn't spend a lot of money on, you know, games or clothing or electronics that other people my age might buy. It all went on to woodwork. But that wasn't, you know, an issue for me. Woodworking is my passion. I love it. It doesn't feel like a job. So I wanted to invest all my money in it and, and make my dream come true, which is to become a master craftsman one day. Hopefully that will come true. So talking about starting young, uh, I started woodwork about nine years ago. I started at the age of 11 in school and I had a really inspirational woodwork teacher. And from then, I knew I wanted to be a woodworker. And it's actually really lucky finding out what you want to do early. You can start progressing and, you know, getting better. You, you know, you spend all your time on it. So because I started so young, I started building up my tool collection from a young age. For Christmas presents, for birthday presents, I'd always ask for money to help to go towards the workshop. If you get 20 pounds from one person, another 20 from another, that all adds up. And I just put it in my bank account until I had enough money to buy a tool. So, the third reason is I still live at home. That's probably why I don't have a girlfriend, uh, which is very sad. Um, but seriously, uh, living at home, I know, won't be helpful to my older viewers. For my younger viewers, we don't have a lot of expenses right now that we would be paying when we're much older. So, currently, I don't need to pay for rent, so I don't need to worry about that. Soon, when I will be moving out, I'm going to have more expenses for other things. But currently, all the money I make can go back in the workshop. Another reason I've managed to build up this workshop is having a YouTube channel. I wouldn't be able to have a workshop like I have today without a YouTube channel. If you told me a few years ago that I'd have a workshop like this, I would literally laugh. I wouldn't believe you. I can't believe how much it's developed and changed. And if you look at my very early videos on the channel, you can see the transformation. Now, I don't have a big YouTube channel, but I'm lucky that woodwork is quite niche and all my viewers are obviously interested in woodwork that tool companies are interested in working with me. So for some of my tools, I've been able to work with a tool company where either I get a discount or I get it for free if I feature it in the channel. However, I'm very clear with the company that I do a deal with that it's going to be a, a non-biased, honest review. So you will notice when I do unboxings or reviews, I say all the things that I think are bad about the machine and all the things that are good. I don't want to sound like a sellout if I said everything was great, it would just look fake and not real. No tool is perfect, so when I feature it in the channel, I want to let you know all the bad things about it, so if you're interested in buying that machine, you know all the things to look out for. The discount on the tool is a big deal, because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to afford it. And finally, the last reason I've managed to build up this workshop and the channel is my patrons. I genuinely can't believe there are people out there that I've never met that want to support me so much. It, 
literally is mind-blowing and my parents can't believe it either. I don't make any money from YouTube so I'm really appreciative for you guys. All of my Patreon support goes to either wood for the projects, tools to make better things and camera and editing softwares to make better videos for you guys. So yeah without you guys this wouldn't be possible. So that is exactly how I've afforded this workshop. I've had a lot of questions in the past about how I've managed to do it. Hopefully you've learned something and uh, you can see now how I've you know, made those purchases. But that is how I grew my workshop. Everyone's gonna be a bit different. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you advice on how to start a workshop, how to grow it, what tools to buy first, how to get commissions, and most importantly, how to keep the clients. So hopefully this is helpful. Let's get straight into it. So the first point I wanna make is I've got a lot of nice tools, but you don't need all these tools to make incredible pieces of furniture. This is my job, so I've invested in the machines to help me do things the quickest. And also I upload two videos a week, so if I was doing everything by hand, it'd be very difficult, you know, to keep up. So I've got a lot of machines to speed up the process, but you don't need them. You would have heard that there are multiple ways of doing the same thing in woodwork, and that is exactly right. In my videos, if I'm using a tool you don't have, you can still do it another way. So if I was using a table saw to make a straight cut for a piece, Instead of the table saw, you could use a jigsaw, you can use a circular saw, you can use a track saw, you can use a band saw, you can even use a router with a straight edge. That would be a bit impractical, lowering the bit each time, but just to show you, it can be done. So yeah, you don't need all the kit, but if you're in a professional workshop, obviously it's helpful. So something I get asked about a lot is what tools should I buy first? Now every woodworker is going to have a different answer, but if you're just starting out and you only have enough money to buy one tool, I highly recommend getting a lathe first because there is no other tool in the workshop that can make a whole project on just that one tool. So with a table saw you can make straight cuts, but you also need a planer to plane the edge, you need clamps to glue the box up, you need a lot of other stuff to make a project using a table saw. Same with a band saw, you know you can make band saw boxes but you also need other tools, clamps and maybe a bobbin sander and other equipment to make the band saw box. And that's the same with a lot of other machinery. You can't do a whole project on just that one tool. But with a lathe, you can chuck any bit of wood on it and then make something. You can make a vase, you can make a bowl, you can make a chess set, you can make a candlestick, you can make coasters, the list goes on. So if you could only buy one tool, it should be a lathe because you'll be able to make a lot of projects and then you can go to a craft fair, sell the stuff you made and then with that profit you can buy the next tool but you couldn't do that with any other tool in the workshop. You couldn't just make a whole thing on it and then sell it. So now for my top five machines you should buy, this will be again different for every woodworker, but I feel like I've come up with five tools in order that will really help you grow your workshop. So the first tool obviously I mentioned is a lathe and for the reasons I just said. The next tool would be a bandsaw because you can make straight cuts and you can make curved cuts. The third tool would be a planer thicknesser because you can plane and thickness boards that you cut on the bandsaw. Then it would be a belt sander and bobbin sander you know combi machine this is a very useful machine and you'll find yourself using it all the time you can sand concaved and convex curves on it is one of the most versatile sanders so i highly recommend that then my fifth machine is a table saw now a lot of you will be surprised that the table saw is number five and that's because if you're just starting out and you just have enough money for one machine at a time most of the time a bandsaw can do everything a table saw can do but if you need to cut wider boards and the throat on your bandsaw isn't big enough you can just use a cheap circular saw to make those cuts Matt Ashley, as you know, makes a lot of great furniture and he doesn't have a table saw. So that just shows you, you don't need one. If you had a lot of money, I would recommend you getting it earlier. But in terms of this list and growing a workshop, if you buy them in that order, I think it makes sense. So when you start out, no one will know about you. So you can't wait for commissions to come to you. You've got to find them yourself. I recommend telling your friends and family that you can make things for them. Really pitch yourself. They will be your first customers and you can get quite a few orders from them. Now, get yourself out there. Go on every social media, create an account, and put in your bio, your email address, and say that you take commissions. Upload photos of your work. It's basically like an online portfolio. Really sell your services and tell people about yourself, and you'll find that you can get commissions from social media. And that's the same as YouTube. I highly recommend creating a YouTube channel because it will open a lot of doors for you. Not only do you get the opportunity to work with tool companies, but you can find commissions from YouTube. Also, creating an online shop is a really good idea. 
But if you're just beginning, I recommend using an established platform like Etsy or eBay, and I think there are some other crafty websites out there. If you create your own personalized website, no one will find it because they don't know you. But on Etsy, if they're looking for a chess set and you made a chess set, they'll find the chess set before they find you. But if you have your own website, they need to find you before they find your products. So your own website only becomes useful when you're a bit bigger. So I recommend creating an Etsy. Now obviously go to craft fairs. You can either have a stall or just go and give out cards there. There are a lot of woodworking and craft competitions either in your local area or internationally. And in the end, there's normally an exhibition where you can exhibit and give out your cards there. If you don't want to go up to people and give your cards out, a really funny trick is if you just leave your cards on a table, you'll find that a lot of people actually take the cards. So by the end of the day, a lot of them will be gone. And those people maybe later on in the year will open their wallet, see this card, and then think maybe I'll buy something from that guy. I recommend printing off letters and posting them through letterbox in your local area. People really like supporting uh, local makers and local businesses. So if you have a big village or a town and you put letters through the letterbox saying you're a local maker and you know basically selling yourself, selling your services and showing pictures of what you do, you're quite likely to get some business from people in your area. My final suggestion on how to get commissions is pitching ideas to people. When I was at school we had competitive houses uh, you might have had the same thing where the school is split up into three or four teams and then you compete against each other in sports days or other competitions. But I noticed the scores were only written on a whiteboard but they didn't actually have a proper scoreboard. So I pitched the idea to them, do you want me to make you a wooden scoreboard? Obviously not for free. And they said yes. So that was one of my early commissions. I recommend doing the same, maybe going to your town hall or local pubs and saying I can make you a sign. If you find things that people don't have that you think they might want, that's a really good idea. So hopefully that was helpful on how to find your first commissions. But what's more important is how to keep your clients. Now when you get a commission, you wanna make sure you're giving them the best service possible so that they're likely to buy from you again or recommend you to a friend. Now the way you give them the best service is either really fast delivery, you want your item to be packaged really well. The nicer it is, a bit like an Apple product, you know, the nicer the packaging is, the more high quality the piece will feel and you know they'll be happy with their purchase if it looks like you taking care in the packaging. Now a really nice touch is if you wrote a letter. It doesn't have to be handwritten, it can be printed, but if you write a letter thanking them for supporting you as a maker and you hope they enjoy their piece, they'll really like that message. Now if you have the time, it's a really good idea to batch out freebies like key rings or coasters, stickers, paperweights, whatever. It'd be a really nice addition if you added one of those in the box so when they receive their item, they get their item plus a nice little, you know, touch, you know, from the maker like a keyring they can use. And if you give them a really good service, they're likely to recommend you to their friends. Don't underestimate the power of word of mouth. I know woodworkers where they've stopped advertising now and all their work comes from word of mouth, you know, people. They recommend him to someone else and someone else and he just keeps on getting work that way. So if you deliver a really good service, then you're likely to get more work. So that is the video. I hope you learned something. I hope you learned a little bit more about me and how I've managed to grow this workshop. If you have any questions about something I talked about or I haven't talked about in the video, then please comment down below. If you found this video helpful or even entertaining, I doubt it, but I'd really appreciate a like on the video. It really helps out the channel. And if you're new, feel free to subscribe. I don't just do talking videos. I do a lot of making videos as well. I got some amazing projects coming up, including this chair, which is probably my biggest project to date. So look out for that video. So thank you so much for sticking to the end of the video. And I'll see you in a couple of days for the next one.